Hey guys, I am so glad you're joining me tonight for prayer. Saturday night prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer makes stuff happen. The Bible talks about the power of agreement. The Bible talks about calling upon the name of the Lord. The Bible talks about over and over about having this relationship with God to where we can engage with Him and He engages with us. And ultimately, it is that we partner to bring His kingdom from heaven to earth. This is, this is why we're here. This is, this is what we're all about. We're, we're not here because we're just joining a church. We're not here just because we're trying to be good people. We're not here just because we don't want to go to hell. We're here because we really want to partner with God and we want to see the kingdom of God come and the will of God be done. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm going to ask you right now, share this uh, video, this uh, time of prayer. Text somebody, have them jump online with us right now. Uh, it's, th this is just, I, I, I know you've been hearing this a lot, but this really is a critical time. I know you've heard it from me. I know you're hearing it from other people, but this is a season that we are facing critical, critical times. And it is so important for you and I to understand the value of what we're doing here right now. Not just valuable to me, not just giving Jesus our wish list and then moving on with life. That's valuable to us. Not just valuable to Jesus to say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk to you and entertain you. But the value is literally layered. It's valuable to us. It's valuable to God. It is valuable to the world around us. It is valuable to us as a church. It is valuable to every sphere of influence because you and I weld power through prayer. So right now I'm going to encourage you to get, you know, uh, get your Bibles out because we're going to pray from Romans chapter 5. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to kind of push into that a little bit. But before we do that, let me tell you, you don't want to miss tomorrow. The Lord gave me something in, in my devotions on Tuesday morning. I, uh, I shared it with our team uh, that comes in on Tuesday to kind of uh, work through the weekends and and make sure that Life Chapel stays in fluid motion throughout the week. I shared it with them, and we just felt like that uh, this Sunday we need to really uh, push this. So I'm going to ask you to be here tomorrow at 9 a.m. or 1045 on campus, or join us online at 1045. So you have, you have three options. You have 9 and 1045 on campus, 1045 online. And I'm going to ask you to join us in that right now. So get your Bibles, open up to um, Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses. We're going to read 1 through 11. And then we're going to pray that. We're going to, we're going to break these verses down and we're going to pray them. So it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now we're in Romans chapter 5. I'm going to verse number 3 now. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved 
from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Romans chapter 5, last verse, verse number 11. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Now, I want us to pray through Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And thank you to those of you that are joining us. This is our Saturday night Life Chapel prayer gathering. And hopefully sometime in the near future, we will be able to actually open the doors on Saturday night and, and, and welcome you back into our prayer gathering. But for now, this is a great opportunity for you to close the door, for you to kind of block everything out, turn the TV off, you know, just kind of calm everything down in your life, get your Bible out and pray with me for the work of the Holy Spirit to be manifest through us. We want to be conduits for the Holy Spirit. So we're going to, first and foremost, we're going to thank God for the greatness of His love that's been poured out upon us because of what He did on the cross. So Father, right now, we thank You and we rejoice in You because of what You did on the cross. We thank you that that was not meaningless, it was not powerless, it was not left uh, without uh, significant impact. But Lord, we thank you that when you went to that cross, you shed your blood, you literally poured out to us the grace that we needed to be saved, to be redeemed to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We don't take that lightly. We rejoice in you, O God, because you are truly a great God. Now, Lord, we ask you to let us taste and experience the depth, the breadth, the length, the width of your love. We just pray, O oh God, that we would not take it light, that we would not look at it as though it's meaningless or insignificant, but that we would take the love that you have for us, and Lord, that we would be able to just absorb it. Let us experience it. Lord, let us realize that no matter how far we go one way or the other, up or down, your love is there. The psalmist David said, no matter where I go, I can't get away from your presence. And Lord, we are thankful and we are grateful to you, but we're asking you, Lord, to help us. Help us to experience this. Help us, Lord, to taste the, the power and the beauty of your love and of your presence. Let us not miss this, this gracious opportunity that you've given us to experience the height and the depth and the width and the, and the length of your love. And Lord, let us just, Lord, Take a moment right now to soak it up, soak it up, to, to, to receive, Lord, the power and the beauty and the presence of your love. Lord, we thank you for that. Now, Lord, come on, we're going to ask God to help us to walk by faith. This is challenging. I know right now everything is being tested. Everything is being tried. It feels like sometimes we're not going to make it. This whole world is about ready to collapse. But you and I as believers, come on, we can take hope and know that we walk by faith. So Lord, I'm asking you to help us. I pray against discouragement and fear and negativity and doubt. And I pray, oh God, that you would help us to walk by faith. Lord, you have called us to 
walk by faith. You've called us to operate in faith. You've called us to be people of faith. You have called us to be full of faith. And we're just seeking after you right now that we would walk by faith. And the reason, listen to me, brothers and sisters, right now. Man, I'm so glad you're with me because God's getting ready to do something for somebody here right now. Your faith is what gives you the ability to sustain or to endure afflictions. This is what the scripture said in Romans chapter 5. It talked about perseverance. It talked about the pressure that we feel. So Lord Jesus, right now, we are praying that you would help us to use our faith to endure in difficult times. We are asking you, Lord, to let the faith that we feel in this moment, the faith that we can glean from your word, for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Father, we are praying right now that that faith would raise up within us to give us that sustaining power, that endurance when suffering comes, when hardship comes, when things go against us, when we feel like nothing's working for us. We are are crying out to you, O oh God. Give us the faith to sustain. Give us the courage. Give us the confidence. Yes, Lord, because we need you. Come on, you got to own that. You've got to own that right there. You and I need the Lord. Now, we think we need a lot of things, but we need the Lord, but we got to own it. It can't be just a passing thought. It can't be just a uh, an idea of, you know, some, some far out, just like maybe, yeah, in tough times, you know, when I'm having a bad day. No, we have to own the idea that we need God every minute of every hour of every day of every week, every decade of every, I don't know if we'll live centuries. You get what I'm saying. We need God. I want us to own that right now. Come on, let's cry out to God and tell him, Lord, I need you. I really need you, Lord Jesus. I need you in my home. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my finances. I need you in my decisions. I need you on my job. I need you as I lead this church. Come on, tell him when you need him. Tell him how bad you need him. Lord, I desperately need you because I can't do this by myself. Lord, I'm crying out to you because I need you, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, that you would let me walk by faith. When I face the difficulties, let me walk with endurance and don't ever let me forget get that I need you, Lord Jesus. I need your holy presence. I need your spirit. I need you in my mind, in the way I think. I need you in my feet, the way I walk. I need you to be a guard in my eyes to protect me from evil things. I need you to be a guard over my ears, O oh God that I would not hear what is not right and what is unsavory before you. I need you to be a guard over my mouth, that I would not speak what is unholy and what is unrighteous and what is ungodly. Lord, I, I need you. I need you to guard my hands, that I would not put my hand to any evil deed. I need you to, go, to, to be with me, oh God, when I'm in my car, when I lay down at night. I need you to be with my kids, oh God. My kids need you. Lord, we need you in every aspect of our life. Now, here's what I want us to do. I want us to pray that we can fully embrace Jesus Christ as our Redeemer. Now, I'm telling you right now, this is extremely important. The thing that I've been very concerned about, and I know, I know, I know, you're, you're probably sick of hearing it, but we've only got a few more weeks, and then whatever happens is over. But the world is not your redemption. I don't know what your situation is, but your political party, and I don't care which one it is, is not your redeemer. Now, come on. If we're Christians, we're Christians. The covenant with Christ should supersede every other aspect of our life. We need to remember and we need to lay hold of the thought and the idea that Jesus Christ is our redeemer. The old song says, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Your job is not your redeemer. Thank God for your job. But that's not the thing that's going to save you. 
We need to embrace the idea. Come on, that's what we're talking about right now. We need to embrace the idea that Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. So Lord Jesus, right now, we will not look to anyone or anything else. We will not look after this or that or, or, or something else. We will look to you and we embrace you as the only hope that we have. Paul said that if our hope is only in this world only, and even if you're involved in it, Jesus, he said, I'm still a miserable man. The hope that we have, the embracing, we're embracing you, Lord, because you are the Redeemer. It is a, an eternal redemption. It is now and later. It is today and tomorrow. It is a lifestyle of walking out the redemptive power of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord Jesus, right now, I will not look to, po to politics to redeem this situation. I will not look to, to, to the, the world and the government to redeem the world in which we live to redeem my life, my family, my finances. I will not look, Lord, to some kind of education to redeem me. Forgive us, O oh God, and let us fully embrace you as the Redeemer that we have and the Redeemer that we need, the Redeemer that we need in our everyday life. God, you see that the world is chasing after everything, but it's not satisfying. It's leaving people empty. They think this, this is about one thing or another, but ultimately, God, we, it, it's leaving people empty and frustrated. God, I'm asking you to let us embrace the idea that you, Lord, are our Redeemer and you alone. There is no other hope. We have no other chance of getting out of this world alive without you as our Redeemer. Come on, somebody needs to put some faith in God right now. You've been very frustrated with what's been happening in your world, in, in, in what you're seeing on TV and what you're reading and what you're you know, following on Facebook and what you're seeing on Instagram and what you're seeing on Twitter and all this kind of stuff. You're very frustrated and I get it because I, I, I get that way myself. But listen, brothers and sisters, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. We have to lay hold of the fact that Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. Jesus is our Redeemer. we got to embrace that. Come on, we need to lay hold of that. Now, the next thing that we're going to pray is we're going to ask God to pour His love into our hearts to increase the power within us. And we're going to pray about the Holy Spirit next because that's where we're going. But right now, we need to pray for the love of God to be poured into our hearts. There is so much hate and there is so much frustration and there is so much angst in the world today. I mean, people are literally killing one another. Sharon and I were just, something came on the news the other night. We just, you know, we just looked at each other and she was like, how do you kill somebody? How do you do that? We can't wrap our brain around that. Now, I know that many of you or hopefully all of you, you're not at that point. But there is, there is such a, a almost a tangible hatred in the world today because politics has people at odds. Racial issues have people at odds. Economics has people at odds. Uh, just pick a topic. Just pick a topic. It has people at odds. And it is so easy to allow a difference to be filled, the gap, your difference between a brother or a sister, even your husband, your wife, your neighbor, your friend, your coworker, to be filled with bitterness. But worse, I, I say worse, maybe not, hatred. We're going to pray for the love of God to fill us. We need the love of God to fill our hearts so that we can increase in the power of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, you've heard it. Don't matter what you say, don't matter what you do. If you don't have love, you're just a noise maker, you're racket, you're irritating. Come on, let's pray. Lord Jesus, fill us with your love. We are asking you, Lord, to baptize us with that love from on high. We try to wrap our brain around the love that you have for us. That John 3.16 kind of love, that you love the world, that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in you should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, Lord, we're praying right now that you would baptize us with that love. Give us that kind of a love. 
Romans, we read it. What kind of man would lay down his life like that? If it's somebody he don't like, there's not even a chance. But maybe if this is a good person, there's a little bit of a chance. But God, we're, this is the kind of love that you had for us. Now, Lord, we're praying that you give us that kind of love for the world around us because it increases our power. Lord, there is no power in hatred. There's no power in bitterness. There is no power in resentment. There is no power in rejection. There is no power in negativity, but there's power in love. There is power in love. So we're praying, oh God, that you would fill us and increase us with love from on high. Lord, we're not talking about a superficial love. We're not talking about a surface love. We're talking about a very deep love that we can look at people that have wronged us and look at people that disagree with us and we can honestly say I love that person I love that person God we're praying that you would increase our love so that we could look at people maybe who have rejected us or people that have walked away from us and said I love that person I love that person because while we were still sinners, you loved us. That's what we read in Romans chapter 5. Now, Lord, we're praying that we would be able to love one another with that same kind of a love. Fill us with that with that love. Come on, pray over your family right now. I pray over my companion, my nieces, my nephews, my brother, my sister, my kids. Lord, I just pray over this house. Come on, the house you're in right now. Just lay hands on the table or the couch or wherever you're at. Just lay hands on a piece of furniture and just say, Lord, fill this place with your love. Let the love of God abound in this place. Let the love of God just be increased in this place. That when people walk in the door, they feel, Lord, the tangible, the, the, the strength of your love, O oh Lord Jesus. We believe that love has the ability to overcome. Love has the ability to win when hatred has no chance at all. So we're, going to, we're just going to continue to believe. We're praying together from Romans chapter 5. And we're continuing to believe. We're, we're, we're getting ready to wrap this up. But here's what we're going to pray. Is we're going to pray now for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So we prayed for love to come to us, to increase in us, that we might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you've never had the Holy Spirit, if you know somebody that has never had the Holy Spirit, they don't know what it means to have the power of God activated in their lives. We here at Life Chapel, we believe in it. Many Sundays at the conclusion of the service, we will pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because we believe that that is the power, according to Acts chapter 1 and 8, that is the power that gives you the ability to be the witness, to overcome, to be victorious, to declare, to speak the word of truth, to proclaim the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom. Look, we can't be church members and think that's enough. That's why Life Chapel doesn't even do membership. Because somehow people found a false sense of security by saying, I joined a church. But they've never joined their heart to God or they've never let God join His Spirit to their heart and baptize them. I want us to pray right now that God would fill your home, that God would fill your car, your workplace, wherever you're at that God would fill that space with his presence. And then secondly, that he would fill your heart, your mind, your life with his spirit. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right now, somebody is about to receive the Holy Spirit for maybe the first time. Maybe it's the first time in a long time. But you're about to speak languages you don't know. Many times through Scripture, we find that the Holy Spirit is uh, evidenced or they recognize that the Holy Spirit was at work when people spoke languages that were not their own. I've literally seen thousands. I'm not exaggerating. In almost 40 years of ministry, Sharon and I have literally seen thousands of people baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we believe that that is very possible. We believe that that is something that is very real. So right now, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we are praying for the baptism of your Holy Spirit right now on the people. Those that are watching, those that are praying with me, those that are in agreement with me, as we've been praying through Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. 
Lord, we are praying right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We are praying, oh God, that right now you would begin to fill the children with the Spirit. Children, we pray that our young people would be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray, oh God, that people that are engaged with us in prayer right now would begin to speak languages that are not their own. Words of the Spirit, oh God. Words of the Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, receive that right now. Let the work of the Holy Ghost. Come on, you need this power. I'm here to tell you, you've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. You've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Release your tongue. Come on, let the work of the Holy Spirit come. Hallelujah. I thank you for what you're doing right now. I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank you because you died on the cross. You gave your life that I could have life. And this is the evidence of that life where we walk in the Spirit and we pray in the Spirit, and we experience the Spirit. Right now, let somebody in their home, in their car, Lord, somebody right now be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit and walk in the grace and in the glory of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for that. We bless you and we acknowledge you, O Lord, because you are the God who gives us good gifts. Lord, you said in your word that if we in our human nature know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more, how much more do you as our heavenly father know how to give good gifts to us if we will just believe and we're asking for the gift of the Holy Spirit because that's what you called it in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 and you promised this gift to to me and to my children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Come on, the Lord has promised it to you. You don't have to live without it. You don't have to live with that lack. You can walk in the overcoming power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. Yes. Come, Holy Spirit. Mm. Come on, I just want to wait on the Spirit because somebody needs to experience that right now. Somebody needs to experience that right now. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for reconciling us back to you. Mm. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that's at work right now. Thank you for what you're doing in this place even right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I'm so glad you joined me tonight. Mm, I feel such a good presence of the Lord right now in this moment. I'm so glad you've joined me. Thank you for being with us. Come on, the Spirit's still moving on some of you. If you just need to turn this off and just go right into your prayer place, man, just do that. But tomorrow morning, let me remind you, 9 a.m. and 1045, we are on campus. And then 1045, we're online. You don't want to miss tomorrow. Listen, I, I, can't, I can't push it hard enough. I can't tell you what's going to happen right now. I don't want to blow it because I think it's going to be very powerful. But you don't want to miss it. And in fact, it'd be a, it, would be a, it would be an absolutely perfect opportunity for you to call a friend or a neighbor and say, come go with me. Come go with me. All right. God bless you. It's so good to be with you tonight. Thank you for agreeing with me in prayer. Thank you for flowing in the spirit. And I believe God has great things in store for us. God bless you.